Hi friends, in this American Family Road Trip Around England vlog, we visit Canterbury, Dover, and the Seven Sisters. Ever since we came to England, one of Jeff's biggest bucket list items was to take a trip to Canterbury. Lately, we've been visiting a lot of medieval cathedrals and Canterbury is known for having one of the oldest churches in England still in use. But for me, one of the first things I read in advanced English class in high school was The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, which aside from the cathedral is another big reason people want to visit this city. The Canterbury Tales was written in the late 1300s during the last decade of Chaucer's life. It is a collection of 24 stories narrated by a group of pilgrims who are traveling to Canterbury to visit the shrine of Thomas Becket. The tales are incomplete when Chaucer died, so the pilgrims fail to reach the city, but apparently an unknown author later wrote a tale where the pilgrims do reach the city. Something I didn't know about Canterbury and I wish I knew about this beforehand is that you can ride a boat down the canal. I hope you guys are in the mood for a history lesson because I learned a lot about this cathedral. So the cathedral was founded in the year 597, shortly after a monk named Augustine of Canterbury was sent here by Pope Gregory I as a missionary. He subsequently became the first Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, a disturbing fun fact about the cathedral is that throughout its history, five archbishops were brutally murdered. Supposedly, after the murder of Archbishop Thomas Becket in 1170, miracles were reported. The cathedral was built by the Normans. They used white stone that was imported from France, but there was a fire in 1070 and the cathedral was rebuilt using French limestone imported by William the Conqueror. Now, this isn't the first time that the cathedral has escaped fire. Um, the cathedral was almost burnt down in 1174 by some envious monks, and it survived two bombings during World War II. Canterbury was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988.
So we got some bunk beds, a queen, I think. Actual shower. Let me see. There's an actual. Oh my gosh, a shower! Oh, I can't wait. Where's the light? Oh, look at this shower. That means it's good. <laughs> right. If you stay the night at the inn, the cost of breakfast is included. Hi friends, I realize it's been a while since I've checked in with you all. So we had a wonderful stay last night. We just finished breakfast. We are packing our stuff up and then we are headed down the coast. So we are going to be making our way back west to home. We're going to be stopping in Dover and the Seven Sisters. And it's gonna be a very chill day today of pretty much just driving down the coast and stopping at whatever looks interesting and looks nice maybe do some walking trails um, stuff like that so uh, i'll see you guys on the road on our way to the white cliffs of dover we passed by dover castle which we would have loved to have visited if we had more time on our trip let's see what they have at the pop-up bookshop oh nice We're parked right in the front of the visitor center, so we're trying to now find a good view to see Dover Castle. Yeah. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in my life. We say that about a lot of places, but it's true. <laughs> Every place we see gets more and more beautiful. You get to see you have the pasture over there. It's a beautiful day. Looks like she's trying to start a fire. <laughs> After visiting the White Cliffs, we started making our way to the Seven Sisters. 
but first we made a stop at the Battle of Britain Memorial. My dad is a 30-year U.S. Navy veteran, so all military history fascinates him. From this spot in June 1940, you would have seen Britain entering its darkest hour. The sea swarmed with hundreds of ships ferrying 300,000 British troops from the French coast at Dunkirk back to Dover. Ever since Winston Churchill described the British air crew fighting the Battle of Britain as so few, the description has symbolized the enormity of their achievement. Almost 20% lost their lives and many more were horrifically injured. They are individually remembered on the memorial wall at this site. We then drove through Folkestone and eventually we were in need of petrol. While my dad was filling up the car with petrol, I popped over to the beach real quick to get a closer look at the water. We wanted to stop for lunch in Hastings but had zero luck finding a place to park so we pressed on. We ended up eating lunch at a little pub outside Bexhill. Heartburn, here I come! Look at that. So we've been here for five minutes and I can confirm that the Seven Sisters is better than the Cliffs of Dover. So if you only have time for one of them, go to the Seven Sisters. All of them are going to stay behind because they had big lunches. So I'm going by myself up the hill. <laughs> Let's go. Ah, I see FOMO has gotten the best of them. They're following me now. <laughs> I don't understand the point of this rope. Like, obviously it's not keeping people out, but also they put benches right there. So what is the point of this? It's a lot warmer up here than I was expecting. We made it. So there is where we just came from. And now let's go down. This cute doggo. I am very curious to see if the water here is colder than in California. Common misconception is that California has warm beaches. It doesn't, it's cold. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how the water fares here. Let me not get my shoes wet and let me not drop my phone. Oh, it's not that bad. It's about the same. It's about the same as Morro Bay or Pismo. I pretty much ditched my entire family to come down here, so I need to go back up to the visitor center and see if I can find them. Oh, we're back! We're back! We're home! So, for retaliation for leaving you alone for less than 48 hours, you managed to pee, pee in a luggage that doesn't belong to you? Huh? I'm like, I picked up that pair of socks, I'm like, why are those socks wet? <laughs> Dad! Dad uh, he feels yeah, no guilt. 